Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome to another instalment of the What's In The Watch Roll series. My favourite video series to be honest as it means I'm going on my travels again. And indeed, wish me luck, it's the first ever Jomwa family holiday. Mrs Jomwa and I are taking Jomwa Jr up to Cairns for a week of winter sunshine. Now I've told Mrs Jomwa it's a budget break. That means we need to fill up at the included breakfast buffet and then it's a subway foot long, between us mind you, for lunch every single day. She wasn't impressed. You can imagine how much fun I am to go on holiday with, can't you? So to fit in with the budget theme, I thought I'd go on a homage holiday. You probably guessed that from the intro though, didn't you? Thank you to my father-in-law Tony, the sixth beach boy, for getting his ukulele out in the studio last week to record that little ditty. Now, I wasn't short of options to be honest with a plethora of homages in the house, so I'm taking what I consider to be the very best of the bunch. Three in the roll, one on the wrist as usual. I'm gonna look like a million bucks in cairns, from six feet away at least. Let's flip the camera and find out what I'm taking. Okay then, three in my Stratton watch roll and one on the wrist. What am I taking up to cairns with me? I'm gonna start as usual with the one on the wrist and this may shock you. Hang on to your hats, it's the Mercure Big Eye Chronograph. Now when I say homage, I'm sure many of you are imagining four Rolex lookalikes and well, you're half right, but there are plenty more other watches out there on a budget that mimic the look of older designs, including this Mercure Big Eye Chronograph. I reviewed this one back in March this year in time for the AliExpress anniversary sale. Not perfect, but I really liked it. It's a homage to the Breguet Type 20 Chronograph of the 1950s, a watch that in good condition these days fetches up to 50 thousand dollars. Not entirely identical, there are small variations as you can see, but yeah, clearly that's the look they were going for with that large register on the right hand side there, hence big eye. But if it looks like a Seagull 1963 in a little black dress, it's because that's pretty much what it is. Kind of even more retro styling designed to look like something else. One of my complaints was you couldn't see the ST1901 because they put a solid case back on it. Not quite sure why they did that, but a lovely looking watch and a really comfortable one, great size on wrist. I always try and take a variety of pieces with me when I'm going away for the week. Four watches, you know, surely one can cover all bases by taking four watches when it's perfectly possible to do it all with one. So here I've got something a little more formal, it's a family holiday. I'm not exactly gonna be going out fine dining, but this is my leather strap option. Gives me something a little more comfortable and lighter to wear during the day. And if I need to time John Moore Jr's naps, I've got the chrono here, although it only goes up to 30 minutes and I hope to goodness that he sleeps for more than 30 minutes at a time. All right, watch number one, Mercure chrono, let's see what's next. Yeah, okay, perhaps this is more what you were expecting from me today. Four of these on holiday. This is the Kronos Pepsi GMT, a homage to, of course, the Rolex Pepsi. GMT Master 2 on Jubilee, the big popular hot ticket item of 2018. And to be honest, one of my two favorite Rolexes, and I'm taking homages of each of those two Rolexes with me. Now I have had the pleasure of sampling and wearing the real deal, the Rolex, a couple of years ago, Mr. X had one of these in his collection at one point, and it was a beautiful experience, and this Kronos gets really, really very, very close to it for a small fraction of the cost. At the current grey market rates, about 48 grand less than the original. And this is super comfortable because of that Jubilee, it's got plenty of water resistance, and imagine I will be in and out of the pool, and there is a flip-flop, Easy Link style adjustment system in there if I do need a little more or a little less bracelet length. So then watch number two, one that will definitely make me look like a million bucks as long as people don't read the brand name on the dial. And it's a similar story for watch number three, my favorite San Martin, and I suspect the watch that I'm gonna be wearing most over the course of the seven days. I just love this thing. It is their Explorer lookalike. It's their Mark 139 mil Explorer lookalike, but which Explorer does it look like? I mean, it's definitely sized like the recently discontinued 214 two. 7039 mil Explorer, but it definitely looks more like one of their vintage models from the 1960s. So then, is it the 
best of both worlds or does it fall between those two stools? I'll leave that one to you. My big problem with this one was the mixed coloring on the dial. They've used some awful San Martin script in white along with that automatic 100 meters. Why didn't they go for 14 throughout? I think it would have looked like a more cohesive design overall if they had. But when I get it on wrist, I don't really care about that at all. It is such a beautiful watch to wear this one. And as you can see, I've scratched it a lot because I have worn this one a lot. Still no idea why Rolex discontinued the 39mm Oyster Range, the Oyster Perpetuals and the Explorer. It was just about the perfect size for a lot of people. Me included, not that I would ever have bought one because they were enormously expensive. With this San Martin, I don't need to. Now I didn't ever actually make a full review video on this one. I just included it in a double unboxing with another of their watches, a Tudor lookalike, towards the middle of last year. As I suggested, they have recently updated this one whilst keeping that 39mm Oyster case. Perhaps I'll try and get one of those in for review, but I really do enjoy this one and I'm looking forward to wearing it in Cairns. And last but not least, it's the Steel Dive 1970, another channel favourite and no mistake, it's not just the big brands that are homaged by these Chinese AliExpress specials. Seiko gets the treatment as well in the form of this 61058110 homage. If you don't believe me, there it is next to a 61058110 and I even put on a matching waffle strap. Isn't that nice? These are tremendous value at less than $100 from Ali. If you haven't got one in your collection, you should probably pick one up though. I would suggest maybe going for the black rather than this slightly awkward multi-tonal green number that I went for. It gives me another knockabout pool style option, especially on this waffle strap by Uncle Seiko. And I think there's generally a different attitude towards this style of homage, the big eye that I showed you earlier on and this steel dive because they are copying the looks of a watch that is no longer in production. I think there's generally not quite the same sneering attitude that people sometimes have to the likes of the Kronos and the San Martin. Not that I really care anyway. So there you have it. That is my selection of four watches for my homage holiday. And I'm really pleased with that selection. Retro Chrono, GMT, a classic Gada watch and a classic dive watch. One on leather, two on metal and one on that resin waffle. So a nice bit of variety for me there then. I think they all look fantastic, but they don't actually cost all that much money, which I think makes them perfect companions for a family holiday. If you fancy watching another couple of my themed what's in the watch roll videos, check out the top one, nothing over $100, or the bottom one, regrets and rebuys. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you again in a future one.